Hello, God bless all of the saints of the Most High God. Good morning. God bless each and every one of you who is under the sound of my voice. It is indeed, hallelujah, an honor and a privilege to be before your audience one more time. Hallelujah. Come on in, people of God. Let's go into the house of the Lord, the virtual house of the Lord. Let us invite the presence of the Holy Spirit where we are. Glory be to God so that he can do what He you need him to do. He will show up, hallelujah, when you, when you invite him in. Where two and three come together, touch and agree on anything on this earth, there the Lord would be in the midst. So if there is something that is troubling you today, something that's said to, to you, that if I can just get to the house of the Lord and hear a word of God, I know everything is going to be all right. Well, you are here. You are in the right place today. Don't you touch that dial. Don't you go away. Stay here through the entirety of this lesson and hear what the Holy Spirit has is saying to the church today and is saying to you because I am a true believer that nothing happens by chance or happenstance so if you clicked on this on this broadcast and you are here I am uh, convinced that God has a word for you today and if you've been praying about something and you saw the title of this specific teaching hallelujah and you said no I'm gonna go by Pastor Betty's church today then you are here by divine order. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So welcome to all of you who are here for the first time. By the way of introduction, my name is Pastor Betty Evans, and I am senior pastor and founder of this very great church that God has designated, hallelujah, and mandated during this specific time. We were not made to exist in any other time but such a time as this and we are excited that you are here and if by any chance hallelujah that you are not connected to the church hallelujah glory be to god we invite you to come and join up with this ministry and this church glory be to god who is destined hallelujah for greatness we are destined hallelujah to do what god has called for us to do fulfilling first of all our own uh, purpose hallelujah and reaching our destiny and then once we reach our destiny not reach our destiny but while we are on our own pilgrimage we are called to the world we are called as his disciples now the 12 original they're off the scene but the torch has been left to you and i and i am only one piece of the puzzle i am only one shepherd among many shepherds and every person that gets saved is considered sheep even pastor betty is considered sheep and every sheep must have a shepherd and that's just how God ordered and if you are not connected and you're not underneath the covering of a shepherd underneath the uh, protection of a shepherd then you need to do that but we invite you to come and join this church where this church is a safe church this church is a church that is Jesus Christ is the center focus of the church and the word of God and not opinion is the highest authority that runs the church and we don't run it we are just instrument and the stewards and the headship that God has put in place hallelujah we invite you to come and join so without any further ado we are going to um, go into the word of God to give you the uh, opening scripture for today and I know it's going to bless your spirit. Let it not just be me reading it, but let, you, let it be that you are hearing what this scripture is saying. And we're going to turn your attention to Psalms 146. And it reads, Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have my being. Uh, put now your trust in, put not your trust, I'm sorry, in uh, princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. His breath goeth forth, he returneth to his earth. In that very day his thoughts perish. Happy is the man that had God of Jacob for his help, whose hope the Lord is in the Lord his God. 
which made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that therein is which keepeth truth forever, which executed judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry. The Lord loosed the prisoners. Glory be to God. The Lord opening openness, the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. The Lord preserved the stranger. He relieved the fatherless and the widow. But the way of the wicked, he turned it upside down. Glory to God. So there's no need for us to be fretting about the wicked. The Lord shall reign how long? Forever. Even thy God, old Zion, unto all generations. And it ends with saying, praise ye the Lord. And that is, we got to command our souls sometimes to praise the Lord. Yes, even when we are struggling, even when we are frustrated, even when we are not happy, even when we are troubled, even when attacks uh, of the enemy has come knocking at our door, even when we're happy, even when we are prosperous, in every situation, we are supposed to and we are commanded to praise the Lord. Glory be to God. There's a power in praising the Lord. You know, I tell you all that all the time. Hallelujah. And it is so true. Praise is your weapon. Glory be to God. Why don't you use it as your weapon? Glory be to God. And see what it does. It says praise steals the avenger. Hallelujah. And when you don't know what else to do, when you sometimes words escape you and you, you don't even know sometimes what to pray, Hallelujah. Go up into praise first. And I'm telling you, when you don't know what to say and when you don't know what to do, let praise be what you do. Get into praise. And then praise, what praise is going to do, it's going to usher you in to worship. And then what does worship you? It's going to usher you right into the presence of God. Glory be to God. And after you enter into the presence of God, whatever you need is the answer. If you need healing, if you need deliverance, if you need salvation, if you need uh, um, your family to be saved, whatever it is, it's in after you worship God, that answer and been in his presence is right there for you. And before you know it, what you came in burdened with today, and that's what I'm declaring for you today, what you came into this virtual sanctuary today with that's burdened you down, that is heavy, heavy laden upon you, you're going to lead today, release, glory be to God as our subject is, and free, hallelujah. And what you came in with, you won't go back out with and it is all up to you glory be to God and this is yours every day of the week whatever the enemy comes in with you don't have to take it glory be to God praise ye the name of the Lord and go back and read this because I really I wanted to I wanted to go there and teach this you all because this is good he is not like man you can't compare God to man you cannot compare God to the uh, to a uh, um, a futile man who breath leaves his body as it says and he goes back to the earth and then the very moment that he ceased to exist his thoughts perish everything about him perishes but you got to serve a God hallelujah that has no ending glory be to God and he will abide with you forever his mercy endure forever his peace and joy and hallelujah it endure forever and everything concerning him that um that is yours or you can appropriate is of an eternal nature you don't have to worry about it running out having a deadline hallelujah glory be to god so we are excited for you being here and we are going to go immediately hallelujah into this this teaching on today glory be to god that we know is from the lord our god 
Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. First of all, before we ask for anything, we come to give you honor. We come to give you praise. We come to give you glory. We come to tell you how good you've been. We come to tell you how magnificent you are. We come to worship you as God. We come to worship you as our healer. We come to worship you as our deliverer. We come to worship you as Jehovah uh, um um, Jireh, who is our provider, Jehovah Nisi, who is our victory banner. We come to worship you, God, as Elohim, the God, the creator, the possessors of both heaven and earth, the first cause of everything. We come to praise you, Alpha and Omega. Hallelujah. We praise you today. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you come into this service today. Let the authority of power of God resonate over over these screens in the name of the Lord and over the airways. Hallelujah. And we, we don't send the Holy Spirit. He's already there. And Holy Spirit, we ask that you will be in the midst, be in their living room, be in their car, be in their kitchen, be hallelujah behind those jail cells, be hallelujah on their jobs and wherever they are listening. And Holy Spirit, send deliverance. Glory be to God. Set the captives free. Glory be to God. Give them a new mind in the mind of Christ. Ignite, hallelujah, in those who know you and let them know the flame and the fire that burns on the inside of them to let them know that they are armed and dangerous. And I pray, Spirit of the living God, to fall afresh on these, this old uh, mortar clay, hallelujah, and and use me as your instrument on today to speak the word of God with simplicity, with accuracy, and with boldness. Hallelujah. And we come to bind every demonic force that comes to hinder this broadcast today over the airways, in the electronic devices, or whatever means it may be. We come and bind his work now. Now, Spirit of the living God, follow fresh on me. Hallelujah. Let this word go forth at sea and let it be planted in the soil of their hearts so that it can germ and then it can produce the fruit that you, your word can produce so that they're not just budding, but they're coming to full bloom and the fruit will be seen by those who don't know. And when those who don't know, you see the goodness of, of our God in their lives. And when they will see the fruit that is manifesting in the lives of your believers, they will be compelled, hallelujah, to give their lives to the Lord and walk into the light hallelujah, that they see that is resonating from your people. We pray, we believe it, we receive it, we call it all done. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands. Give God some praise today. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So yes, so we are in part 18 of this series called the release decree and we are why are you calling the release decree we explained it in the other parts but we are going we talking about a king a king has a right to decree to make a decree what is the decree something that is a uh, like to compare with is contemporary a law that has been put in place that's that cannot be disannulled by you hallelujah but it's more powerful than just a law a king's decree is something that is like of a sovereign rule and nobody can disannul it nobody dare to even come and get it. It cannot be overturned. Glory be to God. And when he makes that decree, when he signs the decree and when he, and, and meaning that he's enforcing it and everybody gets to work to, to make sure that this decree is carried out. And I am saying that there's a king in you and this God told me as a prophet of God, I can decree a thing and it shall be established. And therefore, what established means, it cannot be uh, uprooted. It can be, cannot be moved out of its place. And so we are saying that after we finish this series, that we are decreeing some things over you throughout this series, through all the 18 parts. We are decreeing what you're released from. And we talked about all those things. You're released uh, uh, release from ungodly soul ties. You're released from bad relationships. You are released from your past, past hurts, past pains, past memories, past mistakes and failures. You are
are released, then we talked about from sickness. We Then you are released from poverty and debt. You are released from fears and doubts. You are released from anxieties and worries. Then we, we said you are released from bondage. Then we are in the latter part of you are released for low self-esteem. No, we finished low self-esteem. But today what we're going to be talking about is very on the same line of low self-esteem, but it's, it's different. You are released uh, from um, a masking. And that's what we said, being released from masking. And what are we talking about being released from masking? You all know what a mask is, right? <laughs> if, if never before, we, we have experienced being in masks uh, during this pandemic. And, and for two years now, we've been in, in and out of masks. And some haven't even been in there, but I'm talking to you all who are familiar and have been compliant to the laws of the land and, and to the store store rules that you cannot come in here without a mask. And we know how, how uh, we put that mask on and it seems to camouflage our face. Glory be to God. And, and sometimes I, uh, people uh, who know you, by facial recognition has gotten to the place that we don't know. You don't have glasses on, you don't have your hair different, and then got a mask covering your face. It's hard to recognize that person. So first of all, before we talk about I'm gonna give you all some definitions, and these definitions are coming up right now on your screen. So then what are we talking about when we're talking about masking? What we're talking about, glory be to God, um, when, when you're masking, that means hiding. It means to conceal. It means to camouflage. It means to obscure a, vi a view of it, of something. It means to, uh, to veil, to put a veil on something. So the true identity of something is not known. It means to cover up. It means um, to guard or to protect. And so that, what, that came to mind when I was talking I mean, when I was uh, being led to talk about the masking, the Holy Spirit said, then talk about a current uh, event that they can relate to the masking that is happening during this time. And so you know that we've been in masks and I don't know about you, but after a certain point in time, they get irritating to me. I'm like, I can't breathe. It, you can't breathe the same. You can't um, uh you, you don't get your air circulation like you normally, even when you have the ventilations on there. Then you get the fog if you got glasses on. And then it's just merely just sometimes uncomfortable. The things around your ears get uncomfortable. And then you move to something else, and then that's uncomfortable. And then you uh, I know when I get out, out of the stores and get into my own personal car, and I pull that mask down, boy, I feel such relief. Why? Because I got something on on my face that's normally not there. It is it's something that is coming that is putting like a veil over my face. It's an addition that's something that is not true to uh, what I look like and to, true to my image. And so when I thought about that, I thought about uh, how uh, people are living and this is going to lead us into this part 18 talking about masking taking being released from masking and what is that masking not being true and authentic to who you are putting on masks and hiding behind those masks and you're hiding behind them because you feel comfortable but they're not comfortable you feel comfortable or, or you feeling um what I want to say, like you're hiding, but it's not comfortable. Why? Because it's not the real you. Then you have to, then you have to, at the end of the day, whatever mask you're putting on, then you have to go and face yourself in the mirror. And you know, all do, throughout the day, all throughout the week, all throughout the month, you have not been true and 100% authentically, 100% unapologetically been true to yourself. And so we're talking about this as a huge area that we need release in. Glory be to God. So then we're going to be talking about the three images, the three images. And to those of you who have followed Pastor Betty for any time and follow my teachings to the members and to um, my supporters, to those women who come to my 
women's conference on a yearly basis and to those of my colleagues and those who just come and listen to my teachings you may have heard this before but but don't don't tune me out because this is some good stuff it is the same thing but God's got some new how many know that there is no end to God's word and revelation and so we are talking to, we're going to be talking today in this series about being released from masking it is too many people that are wearing masks today and we're going to talk about some of those types of masks and why are we masking ourselves? We are masking ourselves because um, we may not feel good about the real us. It, uh, we may be masking ourselves to camouflage. We may be masking ourselves to be hiding uh, um, the true us. We may be camouflaging ourselves to, uh, I mean, masking ourselves to protect ourselves because why? We are trying to fit in some mold. M-O-L-D, a mold. You know what a mold is? Like a jello mold. When you put that liquid in there and you put it in the refrigerator, it comes out exactly like that mold is. Many of us are not living authentically. We are not being true to self. And therefore, we are, most of the people are walking around, uh, walking uh, behind masks. And they're uncomfortable. Um... You, you're not living in the vein or in your true identity that God has created you. You are not living in your true, um, unique, uh, uh, and, and embracing your true, unique identifier. Because why? You see a flaw in it. You see that what you are, you see something wrong with what you are. So why? what you're going to do is put a mask on for people. And, and this is one of the biggest things. And so you're saying, well, why is this part of the release decree? Because remember we said all those things I just listed earlier. God said, in order for you to get, when you get to this preaching part, which it would be next week, and we're going to be in the finale of this series. He says, they can't be free and they can't receive these things that I want to have released from them and to enjoy them if they are bound by all of these things that they need to be released from. This area that I'm talking about today is a huge one. Now, we talked about self-image. That's a huge one as well. But this one is related to self-image because the reason that we mask is because we don't have the right image about ourselves. We have a low image or no image. <clears throat> and we are identifying with somebody or some uh, uh, someone um, that we aspire to, we look up to, etc. Or, uh, or we think is the right image or the proper image or the image that's going to get us somewhere, get us somewhere in life. And we are living, most people, are, I'm not going to say all people, but a lot, the majority of individuals today. And the sad thing is, it is they're living it like that, sometimes unconsciously. What is unconsciously um, not, <clears throat> not on purpose? not by design so so me, me like some some things we do we consciously do it like i'm now consciously is sitting there delivering this message some of our actions are unconscious it's like we don't know that we have um had a image set up on the inside of us that is driving our action because unconsciously we are doing it we're not doing it deliberately i'm gonna give you an example Holy Spirit, give me a good example. Let's just use driving. Most of us, when we first start off driving, we do it consciously. We do it, uh, per, uh, um, um, we, we get behind the wheel of the car and we make conscious decisions about which way we turn, when we brake, looking in our mirrors and all of that. We do it consciously, deliberately. Uh, we are... Oh man, I got the I got that word conscious, um, that definition, but I don't have it in front of me right now. But anyway, we you all get the, I mean you are aware of what you're doing, 
okay? Because you're doing it by intentional actions or you're doing it deliberately. When you're doing something subconsciously, you're not really aware of what you are doing. You, you don't take great thought in doing what you're doing. So after we've driven for a long time, I don't know about you, but there's been times I got into my job and I don't even remember how I got there, the route, because why? My subconscious was in drive. It, mean, it was in play, meaning that I had driven that route so long that now in my memory bank, it knows when to turn left, when to turn right, what light is you going to get to and how long it's going to be? Why? Because your your conscious mind was taking note of that. And then it was fouling in a way in your unconscious uh, uh, mind. And then so now you almost do it automatically without much thought to it. You understand? So I think y'all got that. So when we're living a life that is not... Uh, 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 intentional, not purposefully, not with thought to it. Um, we then go into that un the unconscious where we are living unconsciously. And we're not supposed to be living unconsciously. We're supposed to be living consciously on um, um, intentionally. Okay. And so what happened is, is because so many things have fed our unconscious us are in that, that have fed us and it's in and fouled away in our, our subconscious um, mind and we we start to live unconsciously by what's inside the image that's inside i hope i'm explaining this sometimes i feel i feel right now about i'm all i'm over the place all over the place but holy spirit bring this thought together in the name of the lord saying get out of here in Jesus' name so in other words so um let me give me a minute you all hallelujah he is not he's not gonna win here hallelujah he's not gonna win i don't i don't let him win okay give me a minute hallelujah come on praise the lord with me y'all yeah I, I was right on i wanted to bring it up so unconsciously mean unintentional and without realizing something is being done. So that's where the enemy wants to get us to live. Uh, not unintentionally, just get up in the morning and we just unconsciously just live life. Whatever happens today is going to happen. We have no plan. We have no directive. We haven't even been in devotion to get directions from the Holy Spirit. And so we just live in just any kind of way. And we're living unconsciously without awareness, without a sensation or without cognizance. Uh, um, uh, being cognizant of what we are doing. And what has happened is that when we're mass living underneath the mask, some of them don't even know it. And if you told them that, they would get very upset with you. I don't know what you're talking about. I know how I live intentionally. I'm who I am. But they don't understand that they're, who they are right now is not who they started out to be. It's not who God created them to be. Over time and over um, uh, negative words being spoken, over uh, wrong teachings, over um, a, a different stimuli trying to reshape us and remold the image that we're supposed to be in. And what is, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself, what's popular, what's not, and what's considered right, what's not considered right, what's wrong, and what's this and that, then we have uh, allowed our uh, uh, unconscious, um, subconscious mind to, to uh, embrace this stuff. And then before you know it, it's in our subconscious file cabinet, and we are acting out that way. And therefore, we're not living intentionally and by design and on purpose. And so that's what masking come to do. It helps you hide. It helps you blend in. It helps you to be with the majority. It helps you to feel like you're not out there by yourself. And who said that, and I said this um, in uh, three or four teaching, who said that the majority is right? Because you have the majority doing something don't mean that the majority is right. And so what we got to do is understand and we got to identify these masks. And so now it leads me into the heart of the message. Glory be to God. I thought y'all thought I was there, didn't you? <laughs> Glory to God. Oh man, let me let me do my clock as well. Glory to God. 
Hallelujah. So, so when we're talking about uh, masking, uh, man, give me a minute here, man lives, every human being lives under three types of images. It's one or the other. As you're looking at, at the slide, there are three images of man. The first one is the projected image. Secondly, there is the perceived image. Thirdly, there is the actual image. And if you look at those three, there is a correct one that we're supposed to live in. And I know that you all know which one we're supposed to live in, but we're going to discuss all of them. So when we're talking about the projected image, we're talking about the way that you want others to see you. The projected image is the you live yourself out in a way that whatever exudes from you, whatever projects from you, that image you worked on because when you're living in your projected image, you are more concerned about how you want others to see you, okay? Then the second one that we said is the what? The perceived image. The perceived image now is the way others see you. This has no... Um, this is no input from you. It is just the way you are, your character, your attributes, and the way you live your life. You are living in a perceived image. And it, the image now, though, of yourself is formed by others. It's how others see you. And when you find out how others see you, sometimes that drives you to conform to the way others see you. Because why? The way others see you is in that popular way. It is in a good light. And then because you want people to love you, because you want to be liked, because you want to have the majority of the people follow you and, 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 and think well of you, you live in that perceived image. It is how others see you, but you take what others see and then now you allow that to mold you. Glory be to God. Oh, Holy Spirit going to help me bring this home. The last one then is the actual image. That image is the way you really are. Come on, somebody, say that with me. It is the way that you really are. And this is the image that most of us do not embrace, the actual us. Why? Because usually we are afraid that if the actual us come out, that the people that are surrounding us or the people who we want to surround us or the people we want to draw to us may not when they find out who we really are because it may not fit in their little uh, mold. It may not fit in their clique. It may not fit for them that you are the right person that they want to hang around. Okay, so I'm going to go into some scriptures now. Oh, glory be to God. So what image do you all know and, and know that God wants us to live in? The actual. He wants us to live in the actual. He can, He only can deal and give you um, uh, the best when you are in your actual image. He, matter of fact, he made you to operate in your actual image. Because when you don't, you're telling God that what you created in me, the attributes, my characteristics and all of that, it is a little bit... Uh, obscure uh, father uh, it need a little tweaking and he don't make no mistakes even the gifts and callings of God that means whatever he's giving you as a gift, a talent, a skill <clears throat> your expertise, your vacation, your calling he don't change his mind about it you may, and you may walk in another vein and we got many people out of, of uh, their purpose because they're trying to be something else, they're trying to be what somebody said that they would be when they were a child. Oh, they got prophesied to in the church that you're supposed to be a preacher, and they never were. They were supposed to be an entrepreneur 
or they supposed to be in the scientist, they supposed to be in the teacher, whatever. But they told them they supposed to be a preacher. Why? Because it's been tradition. Oh, in our family, that's just how it is. We all been we all been preachers. Or oh, vice versa, kings. I, I mentioned this as well in another teaching. Uh, all of all of your um, the males in the family has been in the medical field. All of the women in the family has been um, in the accounting field or whatever. And then what are you trying to do? Mold your children to be be what's been in your traditional family and down and pass down through your family tree. And it may not be they're supposed to be a doctor or a nurse or, or whatever the career path is. And, or we try as parents, I don't have biological, biological kids, but I'm talking in a, in a, in a point where I, I know this is to be true, that parents sometimes try to live their lives out through their children. So they didn't succeed or they didn't succeed at that. So what do they do? They try to push that into the child and that's not what the child wants to do. What's so sad to, to me today is when I see these little girls and um, and, and usually it's um, the girls. That's why I'm focusing on them because I don't see, um, I'm pretty sure, uh, pretty sure it's um, in, in with the little boys as well. Uh, but I'm going to focus on the little girls. We we see these young little girls as as young as two years old up to about twelve being forced into the beauty pageant scene. Now, if that's what you want to do, and if that's what the child is called to do, or if that's their their gift or their skill, fine. But I have seen where these babies don't even really understand the, that whole pageantry scene. And you see them dress them like they are uh, quadruple their age, the makeup that they have on, the clothing, the, um, the um, behaviors that they uh, introduced them to and, the, and that thought pattern of what beauty means. And I've seen, and most of these, when you see these types of shows, the mothers were into that type of career, but they something happened and they got started to have children or whatever, and something caused them not to fulfill their dream. And now what's happening, because they didn't fulfill it, they're trying to fulfill it through their child. And that child, sometimes I see those babies, they're crying, they're tired, they just want to play, they just want to be little girls, they don't want to go through all of that makeup. Now, some of them do, some of them look like they enjoy doing it, hallelujah, but we got, that's what I'm saying, everybody's different. But I'm talking about the ones who are not called. They had a different calling on their life, but because the parent didn't live it out through their lives, they're living it through their child, and their child is miserable to the point that then that child grows up, and what happens? The child can't handle it. The child feels unfulfilled. They're grown now. They have no self-identity outside of what they do on stage, and if they don't make uh, make a round or get into the semifinals or win now they they feel defeated they depressed they're committing suicide they're not happy or they're on substance abuse and drugs trying to numb because their life is unfulfilled the same way with the little boys we push them into sports why because it has been said by society to be a good man, uh, men has to do this. All boys should be in sports to train them how to be manly, etc., etc., etc. And then all of them are not designed to be in sports. Some of them were made to be uh, uh, um, spokespersons and, and speak and have been. They're gonna. They're supposed to be newscasters and and um, anchor men and all of that. And now because they're not in sports, they are labeled. Y'all see what I'm saying? You see the thing. Everybody living in, in either that perceived uh, image or the projected image, and they not embracing the actual image. And therefore, we got people who got gifts and talents, probably who could have had the next answer to cancer and all of that. They're in something else because why somebody projected an image out to what they supposed to be. So when are we talking about these three images? I want to. I think about Jesus. There, uh, there was the three images in play. There was that uh, perceived image, and that image was how 
of the uh, other people's perceived him and they didn't perceive Jesus right. They didn't perceive him as being the Messiah. They didn't perceive him as being sent from the father. They did not perceive him as being the son of God. Hallelujah. In flesh, glory be to God and the son of man at the same time. They did not see him as the coming king. That's how they perceived him. Then, um, and then, uh, so that's how the, um, the people saw him, but that wasn't who he was. Glory be, they call him Beelzebub. They call him all kinds of names, but he wasn't what they perceived him to be. Then there was the projected, let me give me a minute. That was the projected image that Jesus walked in, um, Um, and that was the projected image that Jesus walked in the way he wanted people to see him. He wanted them to see him for the actual him. They, he wanted them to see him as the Messiah, the one that came to seek and save all that was lost. He wanted them to see him as the healer. He wanted them to see him uh, as God's son because he kept saying to them if you seen me you have seen the father he wanted them to know I am a an exact representation of who the father God is that you believe in but you don't believe me if you don't believe in me you don't believe in the father that sent me so Jesus was trying to operate and, and he projected of who he was by the signs, by the wonders, by the miracles, by things that had never happened before. And they still rejected him. Why? Because they wanted him to be the perceived Jesus. I don't perceive yourself. Now, there were others who did perceive Jesus as exactly who he was. But what was Jesus? Jesus was the act, exact image of his father. And he proved that and all of his life, he walked in his true identity. He, he didn't renege because it wasn't popular. He didn't renege because the religious leaders didn't like it. He stayed true to his, his image. He stayed true to the father and he stayed true even to the purpose by which the father sent him here to do. He, he was convinced of what, who he was and what he was supposed to do and he didn't let anything shake him. So if Jesus walked after his actual image, he requires for us to do the same. And I am releasing you all from those masks. Take the scissors and cut the strings that is holding you, uh, holding that mask on your face where you've been walking in somebody else's footsteps the majority of your life. And now you are even getting older and you still have no good self image of yourself. You still letting people define you. You still being depressed because you can't get in a certain clique, a certain club, a certain group because they say you don't have the right look. You don't have the right education. You don't have the right pedigree. You don't have the right, uh, uh, um, financial status you don't you are not in the right career you don't have the right degree of, behind your name hallelujah and the list go on and you're still searching feeling bad and wondering why they won't embrace you and instead of accepting that they don't embrace you and move on glory be to god hallelujah so so many times we are living in the projected and the perceived us and we're not living actually after who God has created us to be. And therefore, if, when we don't do that, we are fearing man. And the person that you fear, that is who you're going to please. And if you fear man or what man going to think about you, how he's going to relate to you, how is he going to embrace you when you fear man, hallelujah, man is, would be your, your, the very thing that's going to keep driving your life. Glory be to God. But when you fear God Almighty, you'll be you'll be uh, walking respectfully, uh, circumspectly. I'm sorry, and you will be attending to who He created you to be, fearing God. That if I don't, I'm I'm displeasing the Father. I am not. I may be saved, but I'm not pleasing Him in the way that He want me to because I'm outside of what He called me to do. I'm I'm not even fulfilling my assignment in life. 
Glory be to God. Let me continue to move on because I don't want to run out of time. Glory be to God. Yes, 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 yes. It's do I'm doing good, you all. So turn in your Bibles uh, to Hebrews chapter 4 and, and uh, verse 12. Hebrews 4 and 12. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We got so many people just getting um, depressed discouraged about to throw in the towel just just feel like just staying in the bed every day not getting up because they have no true sense of purpose why because they trying to be somebody that they're not because somebody has put some type of false standard in order of what's what's what it really is what and i'm gonna get to that in a minute no let me go there now so we've been conditioned by what's been we've been conditioned by things that's fake for so long that we really don't know truly what is real so you know and and i'm listen you all i'm gonna put a disclaimer out here this is me this ain't no milk message this is me put on your your uh your adult clothing and put on that your 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 thinking cap take this word in balance hallelujah and if it if it hits you then so be it but i'm not um i'm not going to tweak what the holy spirit told me to say hallelujah but i'm putting the disclaimer out there just listen at me and take everything i say in balance so we've been conditioned by what has been fake for so long that sometimes we don't even know what's real and and we'll bring it into light talking about our image so let's talk about cosmetics we have lived uh with we cosmetics is all about we got fake eyelashes they got fake boobs we got fake hips we got fake hair we got fake nails you see what i'm saying and i'm not saying nothing is wrong with it okay don't you know all right i just got it out there but what happened is we have masked behind some of this because why we don't think of ourselves as beautiful we have let society set a standard of what is considered beautiful and so so the cosmetics industry has caused us to be conditioned to what is fake i'm not saying nothing wrong with eyelashes because i've been wanting to see how i look in eyelashes and i am going to put me on some okay because i already know who i am it's to beautify but what i'm just saying take come on y'all y'all got y'all mature enough to take this in balance what i'm saying that these things play a part in saying we're not good enough there's been people who live in these things they won't let nobody see them without their fake stuff on they won't um i'm not talking about people who have conditions with you know with the hair and stuff i'm not talking about that i'm talking about people who got hair and you don't feel like we feel like we are not enough unless we got fake hair on fake nails fake boobs fake uh hips then we go into plexus surgery because we start to see flaws like why why my nose is not right why my eyes is not right why my lips is not right you see what i'm saying just not satisfied with the actual you oh i know it's tight but it's right glory be to god and then we have been conditioned by what is fake through uh, imagery that comes through uh, the TV, meaning that we have allowed the standard through TV, television and the imagery that's on TV to tell us and dictate to us what successful, what um, what success looks like. So if you are, if you're successful, the TV image says you got to ride around in the designer car. You got to have a home in suburbia. You have to um, have a, a, a gorgeous man, or you have to have the best modelistic. A woman you uh, have to have lots of money you you have to be in a certain career path or whatever your portfolio is you got to have a certain type of uh, uh, investment portfolio and the list go on and then those of you who don't have this then you go 
go talking about, oh, I wish I was this, I wish I was like someone, and you're not embracing who you actually are, not understanding that you are enough. I'm not saying that you should not aspire to have some of these things. I'm saying when your image has been tainted by you either having or not having these things currently in your life, and then you become um, you become masked and then you start spending money for things that you don't have and things that you cannot a- afford right now. And I ain't talking about what we call the things to be not as though they were. I'm talking about right now what your budget is and what God is trying to test you at right now and give you some discipline. You don't have the budget to live like Sister Jane and Brother John right now. You could be confessing it, believing it, aspiring to to do it, but you don't have it right now. But because we try to mask, we we go into debt trying to be this because this what has been defined as true success. And it has infiltrated the church because we say that if they don't have this and if they don't have this and that, they're not operating in faith. And they can have faith, but their faith is being developed. But because we teach them like that, what do they do? then now even their mere salvation comes under condemnation when things don't happen for them like it deals for somebody else. They begin to be condemned in their faith. I don't have enough. When the spirit, when the scripture says that a faith, faith as a size of a mustard seed is enough to be explosive to move a mountain. And that we all, there are levels of faith. There's great faith. There's no faith. There's little faith. Hallelujah. You see what I'm saying? And he give us all the measure, but the measure is different based off of how somebody is exercising their faith. But we teach it on the same level. So therefore, when they look at Pastor Betty's life and then they don't have what Pastor Betty has, and I'm teaching that if you don't have it, you ain't got faith like I got in your faith need to come up. Yes, it needs to come up, but I got to teach you and, and, and instruct you how to stay right there and how to get in the faith gym until you build it to you actually walking it out. Not to the point that you're living as a, a perceived and then living projected image until you now going into debt and doing all this kind of crazy stuff to, to amass this stuff. And then you ain't got no peace with it. The blessings of the Lord, it make it rich and added no sorrow with it. Okay, I'm getting so passionate about this because I see people getting condemned in faith and faith is not a condemning uh, 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 spiritual fruit. It is is it supposed to be that we got it and we operate in it. But if you're coming and you got faith and it's bringing you into condemnation, then something is wrong, people of God. Hallelujah. We got to teach it. We got to teach it in balance. And so now let's go back. Then let's talk about the beauty image. Then we have lived with fake so long we don't know what's real. So cause in the beauty uh, imagery, we have said this is what beauty is. Beauty is, oh, I'm talking about women now, small waist, uh, uh, pearly smile, a smooth skin tone, a certain hair length, a certain type of nose, certain type of lips. Hallelujah, 30, 30, uh, 36, 34, 36, or whatever they said that measurement is. Y'all see what I'm saying? Then with the men, uh, we said um, the uh, beauty in the man is having uh, a, a, a nice abs, uh, big, huge, bulging muscles, um, and, and you name it, pearly smile. And then we go into the tones of the skin and, and all of that. I mean, just trying to live. St- who, 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 you all? Who set these standards? Who set these standards? Y'all, y'all answer that question for me. That we're trying to all live up to. It's nothing wrong with having good abs, small waist, and all that. You know, I always say I'm a teaching in balance. If, if, if Pastor Betty right now is not the way I want to be. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go in the gym. I'm going to try to eat healthy, do all that. I'm inspired, but I'm not going to be identifying myself and getting to low self image and, and, and then 
uh, doing it, doing it for the motive and the purpose of trying to please somebody else and fitting into the status quo or what somebody else or what society has says is normal or what's beautiful or what's successful or what is real and what is what is considered acceptable. Y'all understand it? I get. I know y'all do. So what has happened is because we've been conditioned by what is fate. Many of us go putting on masks. So, so yeah, you went and you diet and you do that, but now you, 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 you just food has become a bondage now to you. Now you're really not happy in that area. So, true success, true beauty, true, true, true wealth, truly self worth. What is? What do they come from? It comes from the image on the inside of you that God created you as His workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus fearfully and wonderfully made. He intricately wove you. He did not make any mistakes. He did not make a mistake by your gender. He did not make a mistake by uh, uh, your ethnicity. He did not make a mistake about any of that. But we don't embrace what he created us to be. How come we can't be like Jesus and know uh, and, and project out what we know he made us to be based off of the word of God? Why can't we, and I'm not saying that improvements, you are, I'm not coming against improvements. I'm coming against this, this, this standard that has been set by the world that we are not walking in authenticity and we are walking in those other two images, the majorities of our lives. And there have been people who have went on and passed away and never lived out who they actually were because something was molding them, something was training them, something was putting them into a box and not allowing the true them that God created to come out. Okay, now let me see, glory to God, I'm doing good with my time, hallelujah, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Come on, give God some praise. I know the devil don't like it and I don't care. But anyway, let's go to the scriptures real quick. I told you all to go to what? Um, Hebrews chapter number four. Hebrews chapter number four. I'll give y'all a few scriptures and then we'll be out. Hebrews four and verse number 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So why did you bring this out? Because in order for you to be true to yourself, I want you to know when you're not, God still knows you. Take the word of God, which is active in the life, full of power. He makes it um, uh, operable, energizing, and effective in your life. And that word of God is so powerful to come into your life. And he is able to, to, uh, uh, to penetrate that dividing line of the soul and the spirit. He even knows that to the point that he even knows uh, how uh, the separation of both the joint and the marrow, both of those things are closely together. Uh, and he knows that the deepest parts of our nature of who we supposed to be, exposing and shifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and the purposes of our hearts. So when you are not being authentic to you and you're and are authentic to your actual image, see the Holy Spirit, the Lord already knows, but he knows what's in your heart. He's no, he knows that thing that has invaded your spirit that gave you that right wrong thought and that you are whether you're living in your actual image or not so you're not fooling him and that's who you we should be trying to please it's him because he knows the inside from the out he knows the even the intents of our heart glory be to god so who you're trying to fool when when the one who made you knows you and then the one who you're going to give an account to, which leads me to Galatians 5 and 7. Galatians 5 and 7. And it reads like this. You did run well. Who? See, that word, it didn't say what. It said 
who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? What is the truth? True to your true identity, true to God, true to the the creator, the one who set this thing in motion, who knew you before you were forming your mother womb. And then he, and the investor, <clears throat> the great investor that invested everything that you are, the totality of who you are was in, was, uh, uh, made by him and he invested in you these gifts, abilities, and talents. And then an investor, a true investor, a serious investor, keeps investing in those investments that they get a return of those investments. So although your mom and dad came together, God knew you even before that. He's the one that had you in thought to bring you into this earth realm. And we are we are um, obligated or responsible to walk out the mandate that he created us to do. And I'm going to keep telling y'all, stop disqualifying yourself. Stop feeling like you are less, uh, 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 less than the dust of, 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 the, of the ground. Stop disqualifying yourself. Stop trying to talk yourself out of what God has called for you to be. Embrace it, you all. What are you fearing? If he did, remember I told you, if he invested in you, he's the investor, he already knew. He wouldn't invest in it if he knew he wasn't going to get nothing out of it. If it was going to fail, he wouldn't. He, if, it, if I know a stock going to fail, why would I go put my money in it? I won't do that. I'm going to do, I'm going to invest my money where I know I'm, I believe I'm going to get a rate of return. Hallelujah. And so God knows what he invested in you. He wouldn't invest in you if he was going to call, if it was, you were going to fail. I hope y'all get that. So at the end of the day, when you continue to walk in your perceived you, now see your perceived you is not so much your responsibility because you can't help how people perceive you. There's a lot of people perceive me a certain way. And then when they get to know me, they say, well, we didn't know you were like this. Why? Because they just looked at the exterior. They didn't get the chance to know the person. And that's why I always like to know people because you can't judge by what this look like. I can be looking a certain way and, and you be say, oh, they don't like me. And it, and it had nothing to do with you. I don't even know you. It may have to do with something going on in your family and it's on your mind or 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 some some uh, assignment that you're working on and you're thinking about that when you looked at that person and and they thought you looked at them and didn't like them roll you and they had and you ain't even looked that way you was looking toward that way but you weren't even looking at them but you understand what i mean and so so you got to answer to god at the end of the day at the end of the day it, i don't care if you're if you keep allowing people to mold you and you not come ever to to embrace who God created you to be the one who created you is going to call for his return and it says you did run well you was running and I'm going to read that to amplify you were running the race nobly who has interfered in hindered and stopped you from your heeding and following what the truth was and, and we know this truth was talking about the law of God and all that, but, but your truth, your truth of who he created you to be, who did inflect in on you that you stopped obeying and following the unique um, footprint and fingerprint that God created for you to follow? You're going to give answer to him. And that leads me to the next scripture. And that is found in in 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. I'm about to wind this up, y'all. Thank you for staying with me. Hallelujah. If you've got to go back and rewind this, go back and rewind it. I'm trying to slow down because sometimes when I, I go too fast, I miss some things. Glory be to God. But I think I'm doing pretty good today. Hallelujah. Yes, I got a couple of more minutes here. So 2 Corinthians 5 and 10 says, For we must all... All come on, somebody said all. We must all the ones who's judging you, the ones who you trying to renege, I mean the ones you who you who you're trying to fit in with with and renege your own actual image. Everybody got to stand before God. And and it says all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his bodies 
according to that he had done, whether it be good or whether it be bad. And and uh, I want to take this as a double reference, meaning we know this is talking about how we live and the things we do, how we act out. But I want to say also we're going to stand before God to answer according to the purpose that he and, and the assignment that he has given us. Did we finish it? You know, we used to say, Lord, I'm running, trying to make a hundred, 99 and a half won't do. Lord, I'm running, trying to make a hundred, and 99 and a half won't do. That means 99.999% not going to do. We got the 100% fulfill our purpose and our destiny. That is what we should be striving to do every single day. We miss it sometimes, yes. Get back up, get in the race, keep on running because we got to finish, to get to the finish line, you all. Glory be to God. The richest place, as they said, in the whole wide world is not the Taj Mahal, it's not Fort Knox, it is the graveyard because in the confines of the graveyard lay people who did not follow after their true, actual image. They lived their life for somebody else, majority of their life, and then they found themselves getting old, and then they said it was too late to change it, it is never too late to change i don't care if you got breath in your body it is, it is you got an opportunity today to then to switch today and follow in the lane that god created for you you can you can run your race and stay your course because it's not too late because you still got breath in your body Glory be to God. But we are all going to stand before him and we're going to give him an account. He said, you, he going to ask y'all that question I just gave you in Galatians 5 and 7. You was running nobly, but who hindered you? Then here he said, because you're going to stand before me. You're going to give an account for everything that you've done, good and bad. And then what? Uh, disobedience is bad because why? You disobeyed your assignment. And God had to... You, Use somebody else because if when it especially when it regard to souls to to uh, fulfill that assignment because you renewed but he wanted you to do it because you could have done it more effectively but he won't abort uh, um, a, a good works or abort somebody being help or whatever the case may be because you were disobedient he just has to come and use somebody else glory be to God and he didn't mean for Judas to do. He didn't want Judas to do what he did, but since he did do it, what, what did they do? They had to cast lots and chose somebody else to do the job. But Judas should have been able to do that and to walk that out because he was handpicked. Oh, glory be to God. That came from the Holy Spirit. So then now let's go to, so we almost stand. Let me, I'm going to read this after the Amplified Version, you all. Hallelujah. Just don't want this clock to go off. For me. And so it reads like this, for we must all appear and be revealed as we are. That's what I wanted to get to right there. We're going to be revealed when we stand before God just as we are. Which image is that I'm talking about? The actual one. We're not going to be able to facade. The actual us is going to stand before the Lord. So we're going to be revealed as we are before the judgment seat of Christ. So that each one may receive his pay. You see that? Each one may receive his pay according to what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. Considering what his purpose, this and that, that considering what his purpose and motive have been. And what he has achieved, been busy with, and given himself and his attention to accomplishing it. You understand that? So keep keep on if you want to try to live in somebody else's mold so you can get a ticket into the elite club if you want to. And you changing your image and changing who you are, changing your character, all of that, just trying to be with the with what you call high society and the successful. See how happy you're gonna be after a while with that. No, because God made us to be happy with who he created us to be. Okay, so now let's go. I got two more scriptures to give you all. Uh, Matthews um, chapter number 16 and 13 or Mark 8 and 26. But I'm going to go to Matthews. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Oh, God, thank you for your word, Daddy. Hallelujah. Devil, I know you don't want them to hear it, but they're going to hear this word today. They're going to take it to heart. And they're going to walk in it and they're going to repent if they have been acting out and, and, and trying to live 
somebody else who they're not and they are going to begin today 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 walking in their true actual image and not their perceived or their projected you don't owe nobody nothing if they perceive you to be that that's their fault for perceiving you to be that you know i had somebody tell me once before they said um oh she just a little goody two shoe she thinks she all that and that used to hurt my feelings but if that's what you create, if you create me to be something very big and high in your mind, don't get angry with me then because you the one built that image of me. I didn't say that, so then you put it on me that I'm like that, but you built that image. So I'm not going to be trying to live up to your perception of who I am. I want you to, I, I want you to perceive who I am based off of how I exude the character that I, I give out, how I live my life. Glory be to God. And if you don't receive it that way, like they didn't receive, Jesus wanted them to perceive him as the Messiah. He wanted them to perceive him as, as coming not to condemn, but to save the lost. He didn't want, he, he wanted them to perceive him in a certain way. And I want to be perceived as a child of God, as an obedient child of Christ. I want to be perceived as walking in the authority of Christ, walking in my faith and doing what God called me to do. Now, if you build up a high image of me in your mind and then you get jealous of me and then you want to fight me and do I'm not talking about fight physically, but in the spirit realm and come again and do all of that, then that's your problem. Because I'm I'm giving out a perceived image, but I can't I can't um I can't um do anything about how you perceive me. But if I project if I'm, I'm I'm trying to project out something that I know you want me to be, then I'm the one in danger. And if I renege on being the actual me, how I really am, then I'm doing my own self a disservice. I'm not doing anybody else a disservice but myself. And then all the other people who who is going to be looking up to me. Amen. So let's go. I, I say what? To Matthew's chapter number uh, 16 and verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, is? And they began to give him an answer. They said, Some say that you are John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But he wasn't interested in what everybody else was saying, you know? Remember, we talked, just talked about how they perceived him as Beelzebub, a devil, and all that. Then they also believed, perceived him as being just a good old prophet that was sent. He may be John the Baptist, some, he may be Elias, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And the Lord wasn't interested in how uh, the world image of him or how they were perceiving him. He wanted to know what does my inner circle, what is my government because the number 12 is the number of government what is the government that i'm going to leave as representative here in this earth the government of the 12 disciples what are my inner circle what image do they have of me so he asked them who said he said unto them but who said ye that i am he wanted to know what was their perception what was their image do they see me in my actual image or are they are they seeing me in a, a projected or a perceived image. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. <laughs> correct. Give give Peter a hand clap. He got it correct. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Berjona, for flesh and blood, meaning your own intellect, your own reason, your own education, did not reveal that to you. Glory be to God. He said, Flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father. <laughs> My Father, which is in heaven, revealed that unto you. And if you are having trouble with this, no condemnation. Pastor Betty, don't condemn you. I'm just saying, get up. I, as I always say, whatever your problem is, and you have fallen down, I'm not condemning you, but I'm not going to leave you there. Get up from there and go to the Father and say, Father, will you reveal to me who you created me to be? Actually, what is that? Can you allow me to stay true to my self identity? I repent if I have tried to be somebody else to fit in somewhere. I know you have uniquely and wonderfully made me. Will you show me? Would you reveal it, Holy Spirit, to me what the Father has created for me to be? And guess what? The Holy Spirit will most definitely show you. How it's going to show you? He's going to talk to you through your heart, in your heart, through the Word of God. You're going to see yourself as God sees you. Get in there, as we said in the other parts 
of this series. Get into the word of God and see what he says about you. See who he created you to be. And then when in regard to your own individual life here on this earth, ask God, what career path should I be taking? What spiritual path should I am I called into? What ministry have you called me into? What, should, what is my unique gift and talent? And he'll tell you, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Okay, God, so I got I got uh, one more scripture. Wait a minute. Yeah, one more scripture. Hallelujah. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Let's go to uh, Luke chapter 13. Luke 13. Luke chapter 13. I probably should have gave this one when I um, gave the one about... Um, we all must stand before the judgment seat of Christ, but it'll be applicable right here. So, <clears throat> Luke 13 and verse number 25. Glory be to God, thy word, O God, bring interest of light. Interest of light. Glory to God. And dispels all darkness in Jesus' name. So, it says, when one of the masters of the house has risen up and have shut to, and, and have shut to the door and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door saying Lord Lord open up to us and he shall answer and say unto you I know you not whence are ye so in other words he's talking about striving to enter in the straight gate and um, and um, how people are going to come to him in the last days and they're going to be saying uh, Lord, open the door. Because see, now the master, Jesus, has closed the door. It's the same way uh, that he gave the people a chance. He warned them. Noah was warning them that it's going to rain. They laughed him to scorn. They mocked him. Talking about, look, it's no rain. I can imagine some of the comments that was being said. And they were saying that nothing is going to happen. He gave them. He said, now, Noah, I have stri strived with man long enough. He says, I'm going to save you and your family. He, he gave them all the instructions about the animals. And he said, then I want you to go in. After you've done all of this that I have commanded you without skipping steps, close the door. And, the, and, and he closed them in. So when they come trying to knock on the door to get in, what happened? The doors was closed. It was too late. And so what am I saying? Here the master, the, this parable saying the master, they uh, closed the door. They knocked on the door saying, Lord, Lord, open up to us. And he is going to say to them, I don't even know you where you're coming from. In other words, he said, you are not mine. Where you come from? You some foreigner to me. You, you're not of my family. Verse 26 says, then shall you begin to say, we have eaten and drunk in the in your presence and you and, and thou hast taught us in the street. In other words, we've been in your presence. You ate with us. You sat around with us and we've been around you and, and you taught us in the street. Look, verse 27 said, but he shall say, I tell you, I know you not. Whence you are, depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. So in other words, he said, uh, I know what you're saying, but I don't know you. And he said, depart from me, you wrongdoers. In other words, and then they shall be, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Uh, when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all of the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves shall be thrust out. I was looking for that um, where he says, okay, then yeah, go down to verse now number uh, 32. And he said unto them, go ye and tell that fox, behold, I cast out devils and I, no, that's not the one. Oh man, let's see. And I, um, and, and one of them is it, it talks about how that they that they gonna come into him say, uh, Lord, we in your name we cast out devils and we did this. He said, I don't know you. Who are you? And so what am I saying? I'm saying that we're gonna stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account for what He's called for us to do. Don't let Him say I don't recognize you because of your disobedience. Because you didn't walk in your actual image. You didn't walk out your assignment. You didn't walk in your purpose. 
You didn't run your race and stay your course. You stayed focused on everything and everybody. And therefore, the majority of your life, you lived a phony life. Hallelujah. What? Who do you have to please and what are you sacrificing by walking in an image that is not yours? That is causing you heartache and pain and that is allowing you to go into career paths for years and then you find out that's not what you're called to do. And I've seen some people who said, I changed. And then they say, I ain't never been happier. Because why? That's what they're supposed to have been doing all along. Could you imagine uh, the uh, success and the happiness they could have had because they got up? Because they teach us in, in entrepreneurial, the rule of entrepreneurship is what? And, and, and the rule of your purpose is what do you have passion for to do? And it's nothing like working. That's why a lot of people working in toil because they're not in uh, uh, following their actual image of who they were created to be. And then it's nothing like doing something with passion. The work may still be just as long, intense, long hours, but it's a difference when you're doing something in passion and when you're doing something by habit and by just walking in a mold and something that is not your assignment and that you have no passion for. Glory be to God. So I love y'all. I thank you all for being here. So, oh, and the last thing I want to say to you all is this, is that we are living in this age that it is, is very crucial and it is imperative for you to, uh, if you don't know uh, who you are truly, I think, I believe everybody know somehow, but some of you have buried you so far down deep. It's, it's past six feet under that you don't even recognize who you are until if it was in front of you, you wouldn't even recognize, oh, that's me. But if you ask the Holy Spirit, as I told you earlier, he is going to show it to you. But we are living in the age and you've got to really be on the lookout for things that are trying to shape and to create these new images that is so out of alignment of the word of God. And you must begin to understand that the God that created you made no mistake. And so for some of you, you have begun to allow your image to be shaped by things in the social media world. You you so hooked on and getting depressed. People been in tears. I put stuff out there. People won't even like it. I do broadcasts and don't even nobody attend. The devil is a lie. It ain't about the hearts and it ain't about how many likes you get. Because if you are speaking truth and if you are helping only one person by and being authentic to who God called you to be and what he told you to do, hallelujah, you should know that you're successful. Don't be letting social media shape your image until it's changing you out of your actual image into an image of of what you seeing on social media. Because I'm here to tell y'all something. Everything you see on social media is not true. You see, because see this, remember we talking about taking off the mask. I'm asking God in the name of the Lord Jesus today, Lord, that they take off these masks. Because parents got masks on and they won't be true to their kids and tell them the truth about things that they've been through and then their kids get involved in and if they had it just came true, took the mask off and told them that, hey, I can identify for where you are in this struggle that you're going through because guess what, mom and daddy been there. But you make them feel like you've been this perfect, clean and never disobeyed your parents and don't even identify with nothing that they are talking about. And then you could have just simply told them, be, be your actual image and not this perceived thing because you got a title and a position now and you don't want them to know your past. I'm not saying you got to tell them everything, but something that the Holy Spirit will let you because our past mistakes and all of that hurts and disappointments, past failures are supposed to be a platform that we help pull somebody out of the fire and keep them from going that way. But if we are walking in these projected and perceived images, trying to uh, 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 live out our life because of we don't want somebody to know that that's where we can from hallelujah and then we allow these things printed materials to to mold us we allowing man-made success list to, and popular by popular votes and the majority vote to change who we are glory be to god don't do it 
Hallelujah. Stay true to you. Don't let... See, see, a lot of us in the church today, we look all clean. We don't, we don't, we don't look like what we came from. And that is the glory of God on us. And we and, and thank the Lord for that. Hallelujah. Sometimes I've been known some friends sometimes for some time. And when they we start sharing stories and they tell me some things, I say, if you had never told me, I never would have guessed. But they were, we have such a friendship that we embrace each other's uh, uniqueness. We embrace where each other came from, whether some come from a good background, some come from the bad. We know we all was filthy and needed to be saved. And, and when we when you create that atmosphere where they don't feel that they're going to be judged if they release some of these things, they'll be more open. Hallelujah. And when... When when we come together and I, I address and and say some things, we say, "Whoa! I would have never guessed that." Why? Because how the Lord comes and clean you up and never looks like you've done that before. Why? Because it's in your past. He throws your sins in the sea of forgetfulness. He don't remember them any more. And even when you bring them up and other people go uh, deep. Uh, see diving into your sea of sins trying to bring up stuff where you used to be don't identify with say hey that that's what you perceive me to be i i'm changed i've been bought with the i've been uh, changed by the blood of jesus christ i'm a brand new creature in him the old things have passed away the whole all things have become new i am walking in my actual image now which is after the image of god i will dominate i am more than a conqueror i am washed i am clean i am regenerated glory be to god and the list go on but but when we get together in our group and 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 they don't look like what they've been through glory be to god and it's a safe environment because nobody said, oh man, I, you can't be my friend no more. I didn't know you was about that and you did that. Because why? It's irrelevant. They didn't do it. Such were some of you. <clears throat> you were adulterers. You were fornicators. You was a high minded. You was a thief, a liar. You was all of those things. But you're not anymore. That's what the truth thing. And so because we got these masks on and we, we've been cleaned up and now we got, not only have we been cleaned up, but now we are got titles and positions. Hallelujah, come on y'all. And people are hiding behind those as well. We living in these types of days, you all, people hiding behind the church because it's a safe place. People are not going to, to um, People are not going to really look at me because I'm behind the church. But guess what? I'm behind the church ain't good enough no more. That's being exposed as well. Come on, y'all. Let's get real. Let's get authentic. If you don't know Jesus today and you are not saved, what would I do? I would get saved. If you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins and you always say, Pastor Betty, I can so identify with this lesson today because I've been walking in what everybody else want me to walk in. I've been walking with this mask on, trying to camouflage, trying just to protect myself. Hallelujah. Because when I open up, then people run away from me. People disassociate themselves with me. That's just the wrong people. And say, but I I have an a, a image that has been shaped by social media, it's been shaped by the world, it's been shaped by my parents, it's been shaped by unfaithful friends, it's been shaped by jealous people and all of this. I've been walking in either my perceived self because that's how they perceive me. Then I say, hey, if they perceive me like that, I got to walk in it because that's what they're expecting. Or I've been uh, walking in the projected me, how I've been trying to project myself to others just to fit in. And I'm tired. That is a lot of work, Pastor Betty. I am ready to walk in my actual image. And that is in the image of of, of, of God as found in Genesis 1 26 let us create man in our image and our in our likeness and let them have dominion what of the fish of the sea the fowl the air and all the things so I want to walk in that actual image I want to walk in in my purpose I want to walk in my gift I want to walk in all the things that God created for me to walk in and you said, and I want to be saved. I've been feeling the need for God in this last hour. You could be saved, my brothers and sisters, in one minute or less. You can simply say this prayer out to me. Say, Dear Lord, here I am. You know me, and you know how I've lived. Lord, I am a sinner that desires to be saved. Lord, I've been walking in an image that has kept me unhappy kept me living life purposefully and just kept me depressed. 
I'm ready to live in my actual image. I'm ready to identify with the creation that you've made me to be. Lord Jesus, I invite you into my heart today. Would you come into my life today? Would you live your life in me? And will you live your life through me? I surrender my will over to your will. Lord, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died for my sins. But on the third day, he was risen again. And he is sitting at the right hand of the Father, alive today. Jesus, I believe and I receive. Therefore, by my confession and by my belief in you, I believe and I know that today I am now saved. You are in my heart. Now from this day forth, I belong to you. I walk in your ways. I walk in your law. I obey your commandments and I walk in my actual image. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you said that simple prayer, my brother and sister, you are right to now say glory to God. The angels in heaven are now rejoicing. It says there is more rejoicing in uh, Luke chapter 15. There is more rejoicing in heaven over one, just one sinner that repent more than 99 people that don't need any repentance. There is a celebration on, uh, in heaven on your behalf. Your name is now just being recorded in the book of life. That is the book that's going to be opened and every name that is written therein will be gain interest into the kingdom of God to be forever throughout all eternity in the presence of the Lord. No more sickness, no more pain, no more death, no more heartache, no more discrimination, no more evil, no more hatred, no more wars, no, no more pain. And the list go on. Isn't that something that you want? Hallelujah. Now, if you said that prayer and you gave Jesus Christ your life, we will ask you to do us a favor. Would you reach out to us and let us know that we want to keep a record of your uh, giving your life to the Lord via this broadcast. And we also want to make it available to you that if you don't have a church and you feel led to make Kingdom Life Christian Center your church, we want to welcome you to the family of God. So send us an email at klcc1207 at yahoo.com and in the subject matter, write uh, receive Christ. If you're a backslider, say that same prayer. Say, Lord, instead of saying, say, Lord, reclaim me. I've fallen back. I want to return and just come on back. And if you want to be a member of Kingdom Life, also send us an email and say backslider reclaim. And in the body of the letter for both those who've been saved for the first time or are back or backslider being reclaimed, say I also would like to become a part of Kingdom Life Christian Center. If you don't, that is fine. You can make that decision now or later. We're just happy to get you into the kingdom. Still send us that email, would you? That is the way of us measuring our success and then keeping track. Hallelujah. And to be a vehicle by which we can help you uh, uh, get connected to church if you're not connected because that is one of the things you need to do now. This is just the initial step. There's other things to do and we want to give you that information. So send us that email and then we'll give you the information that you need. Glory be to God. We have a warm seat of welcome, a safe place, a loving place, and a church that is on the move of God. We would love to have you to be a part of Kingdom Life Christian Center. Glory be to God. And we are excited about you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And if you haven't already, would you all do me a favor? Go, I don't know where it is. If it's, if it's right here or right here, click on that subscription button to subscribe to Kingdom Online Church Connection. That's the title of our YouTube channel for our Sunday mornings virtual services and for those who are not here in the states because we are located on the northwest side of Chicago and you're not in the states and you still want to become a part of Kingdom Life, we've been having those requests this is the way, the first initial step to do it through our YouTube channel become an e-member and then we'll give you the information for that as well Glory be to God so, um, so with all my clear 
And so um, also I am putting, would you follow us? Or just, and then click on the notification bell as well so you can be notified when we have content right here on this channel. We are also putting up the screen now for those of you who have been desiring to get the information of how you could donate to the ministry. We thank you in advance for your donation. The donation is too small. Glory be to God. And we, we decree and declare a, a hundredfold return on your seed that is sown. Glory be to God. And, and please know that when you sow your seed into kingdom life, that you are sowing into good soil. And everything that I do for the kingdom, you may not be here physically, but it is going to be put as credit onto your account. Isn't that good news? You don't have to do the work, but you can come and it will be put on your account. We are also putting up all of our contact information right here on the screen for you to follow us on all of these social media platforms. We would greatly appreciate it. Hallelujah. And you can go to our website as well and see what we're about. Read a little bit about our ministry and you can see my bio and, and, and what our mission is and what our mission statement is. Glory be to God. So we are going to sign off with that, people of God. We're going to be giving communion um, at the end of, of the finale of the, this series. And we're going to be giving you a, a verbal, I'm going to write it down and, and it will be available. We're going to give you a verbal decree. I'm going to speak a decree, a decree over you guys. Glory be to God in regard to the year. This is your release. Okay. So we're going to give you that and um, glory be to God. Hallelujah. We're going to give you that on the finale and we know it's going to be blessed and we're going to speak it over you as the Lord says, and we're going to believe that it's going to come to pass because it's time for the things to be released. So next week, we're going to be talking about all the things that God is about to release for you. And I'm so excited about that. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank God for all of the King Kingdom Life Christian Center uh, members. Hallelujah. Even the ones that's future members, we thank God for you. You're out there. We know that we have need of you. We got a lot of work to do. And then to all the Kingdom Life Christian Center partners, supporters well wisher and to all of my colleagues and my my friends and to all of those who are upholding this ministry we thank god for you hallelujah to the isabel family we love you so much uh to the parker family we love you so much to the golf family we love you so much to the brown family most definitely we love you so much hallelujah this woman of god has been a blessing in my life and we're going to share that with you all later uh, um sister deborah you you know that God's got a blessing. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree a release in her life. Whatever it is that she's in need of immediately right now, we thank you that it's being released exceedingly abundantly above all that she can even ask or think. Glory be to God. We thank you so much. Hallelujah. You've been such a blessing in our lives and to all of you. And you all continue to pray for Pastor Betty as I pray for you. We are heading to South Carolina, hallelujah, in November for a women's conference. You all keep me lifted up in prayer, hallelujah, because we want signs, wonders, and miracles to be performed there in the name of Jesus. We don't uh, take anything less. Glory be to God. Whatever God sending me there to do, that it will be successful, hallelujah, and be to his pleasing. Hallelujah. You all keep me in your uplifting in your prayers. So with all that being said, you all have a fantabulous rest of the, sun, the Sunday. Have the, a, a wonderful, pros, prosperous, hallelujah, and, uh, um, and a fulfilled week coming up. Hallelujah. Be blessed, people of God. This is Pastor Betty of Kingdom Life Christian Center located on the northwest side of Chicago. I am a pastor who is teaching kingdom principles for kingdom living. You all be blessed. We love you with the love of Jesus. I tell you that all the time, and I so mean it. But he loves you so much more more than any human love can come, can, can compare or come close with. I 
our theme here at, at Kingdom Life is we, we are loved by God. So what are we going to do? We're going to give love away. And why don't you find yourself this week finding ways to give some love away? If it's nothing but a call, uh, a card, a piece of money, uh, a, a God bless you, a hug, or whatever that is, find yourself giving some love away. Glory be to God. And I decree and declare that you are released. Now go in the name of the Lord. You all be blessed now in the name of Jesus. Amen.